everyone, welcome to February Books. Uh, if you're wondering, it's a casual day. <laughs> this MAC jacket I got from Walmart and it's time and true. I couldn't find it online, but go to your store. I love this. It's really warm and we're having quite a windstorm outside. So hopefully that's not too distracting if the wind starts howling like it does. I have got some great books. Now, if you are prone to having your peace disturbed, skip over the first two. So the first one is Tomato Red, and that's by the same author as Winter's Bone that I reviewed last month. Loved it so much, went out and got this one from the library. Um, it's in the Ozarks. It is gritty, it is gruesome, it is graphic, <laughs> and it is good. It is Bev, the mother, only she doesn't act like a mother, to Jamalee and Jason. They are very, very close in age, and they are very close in what may be inappropriate ways. Jason is gorgeous, and he's gay, which is an absolute no-no in the Ozarks. And along comes Sammy Barlack, and he is a loser ex-con, and he fits in perfectly with Jamalee and Jason. It is, like I said, it's just something that's going to keep you on the edge of your seat. I listened to this one and it was really well done with the voices on the audio. And it was pretty graphic. And it was really, really good. I enjoyed it. So I was so into the hillbilly noir genre, I went and got another book by a different author called Razorblade Tears. And it's by S.A. Cosby. And it was even better, I think. So good. So there are two fathers of a black and a white boy, and both the fathers are ex-cons. One of the father gets a knock on the door, and it's the police, and he can tell right away it's not because he's an ex-con, it's not because of anything like that. He knows something has happened, and he finds out that his son has been absolutely brutally murdered, along with his gay boyfriend, husband. And so the two fathers that are both ex-cons start to look into what happened and then they want revenge. And this is fast paced. It'll keep you on the edge of your seat. It is so, it's kind of a mystery, but it's really, really, really well done. Like, oh my goodness, I am going to definitely be reading more by S.A. Cosby. Honestly, I wondered if this author was an ex-felon. He is so brilliant at capturing these characters. I'm like, he must be somebody who served time. Well, I didn't find that out, but what I found out, his wife is a coroner in a town in, where they live in Alabama. I'm like, yeah, I can imagine their dinner conversation. She obviously gave him a lot of material for this book. It is, again, something that will disturb your peace if you're prone to that. I am not. I can just enjoy whatever, just the same way as some people can enjoy a television show. I can enjoy a book, and I can sleep like a baby. I cannot tell you how much I love S.A. Cosby, and we'll be looking at more of his books. He was that good. The next book is The Gun Call. This is by Stephen Rowley, and he wrote... Lily and the Octopus, which was another book that I enjoyed. This is about a gay uncle, hence the name Guncle. And it's really cute. It is not wholesome. There is some swearing and sex and hints of sex, but it is really cute. Um, the relationship that he has, the uncle, the Guncle, with his niece and his nephew, and he ends up taking them for a summer and how all three of them grow and learn through the circumstance that caused him to have to take the kids. It's set in Palm Springs. I loved everything about it. It was really, really good. It was makes you chuckle. It was, um, he's an adult who talks adult to the children, maybe a little too adult at times. It was cute. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. And think that most people would as well. Like I said, there is some swearing and hints of sex, but, and the gay theme, but if you don't mind all of that, it's really cute. And I would definitely recommend it. I loved it. 
The next one is called Once There Were Wolves. And there's two sisters from Australia, Inti and Aggie. And Inti and Aggie go to Scotland with their biologist team to release 14 wolves into the wild in Scotland. It's like, was it Yellowstone that did that? Where they put the wolves back in and it helped with the ecosystem. This is what they're hoping to accomplish there. And they have a lot of clash with the Scottish town folks, the farmers, you know, everybody who does not want wolves living in their backyard. And a man turns up dead. Some people are speculating that it was because of a wolf. There's all kinds of different things going on, including Inti and Aggie have a lot of baggage that they have left behind or brought with them from Australia to Scotland. There was some far-fetched parts in this, but for the most part, I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot about the wolves, which I enjoyed. There was some uncomfortable things. It's not a wholesome book, but I, like I said, that doesn't bother me, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done, well researched, and I just really, really liked it. Learned a lot of different things in that book, and I always value that. The last one is The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. And what's funny is I started this with two girls from my book club on Voxer which if you don't know Voxer, it's like a walkie-talkie program where you can just check your message anytime. So it's kind of like a cross between walkie-talkie and voicemail. A bunch of you recommended this in probably my December books and it just so happened this was the book that my book club girls in our Christian book club on Voxer said we were going to start in January. What we were doing is one chapter a day, five days a week. So it gave you two days off. You could figure out where those two days off went. I needed those two days off with my work schedule. I couldn't always do Monday to Friday. I love the book. I cannot recommend the book highly enough and doing the one chapter a day was really nice. I took so much away from this book, but I would also strongly recommend, if you can, doing it with a group, at least one other person, but if you can, with a group of friends. And we're going to continue doing this, and I just love those girls. They're my church. They are insightful. They had so many perspectives on the chapters that I didn't even think about, and they left me with more to think about after we had our Boxer discussion, and I value that so much, and it's brought us closer, which is phenomenal. The book has different parts of the purpose-driven life, and it's really, really made me understand. I know this sounds obvious, but this is all temporary. None of it matters. And what matters is the heavenly things. And I've said that before in my January Sunday chat about unity, that you have to focus on the heavenly things. This book really drives it home of how to grow in Christ, how to get closer to Christ. I just loved it. Loved, loved, loved it. And I'm really excited that we're going to continue doing Christian books on this Voxer discussion because I think we all are expressing the same sentiment, how it's brought us closer, how it's enriched our lives, it's enriched our enjoyment and learning of the book. It's just amazing. I, when I suggested it to the group, I never thought it would be as fulfilling and rewarding as it is, and I'm just thrilled with it. So if you have any Christian books, let me know. Hang on while the plane goes over. If you have any Christian books that you think would be a good discussion, let me know. I think we've got which one we're going to start in March, and I just can't recommend strongly enough having Christian girlfriends that you check in with regularly. And Voxer is a free app. It's really convenient because you can leave a two-minute message on your phone and say, hey, I just read chapter 20-whatever, and it 
talked about this and here's how it hit home for me and here's my thoughts and I think at first we were all a tiny little bit hesitant because we're not Joyce Meyer, we don't have anything <laughs> profound or unique to say and it felt vulnerable and now we realize how much we get from each other and how beneficial it is. So love that and strongly recommend The Purpose Driven Life as well as finding yourself some ladies that you can discuss a book with. It will enrich your life like you would not believe. So that's all the books that I have. If you have anything, a Christian book for us to add to our list or any just regular good old fiction books which I always enjoy, let me know. And that's everything. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you spending some of your day with me and I hope you're having an amazing day. We'll talk to you next time.